Jenny uh, had got her qualifications at uh, University of New South Wales and is an accredited exercise physiologist. Uh, she has done many jobs in research and in hands-on roles and she tells me she's a mobile person now and can works all over the place just to suit herself. Uh, the Enrich program was really good and uh, I'm sure that tonight's presentation will be equally as good. Would you please welcome Jenny? All right, thanks very much for having me here tonight. Um, I'm an exercise physiologist, and what we do is basically we help people with chronic conditions manage it with exercise. So we sort of see exercise like medicine, okay? So we need to make sure we have the right dose, amount, frequency at the right time. So timing is everything, and obviously like you know with other medications, if you take the wrong dose or you know the wrong type, you could have nasty side effects. So we sort of like to see that with exercise, it will help you lead a more functional life. So prostate cancer, as you're most, almost all aware, uh, most common cancer in men. Um, the survival rates for five to ten years is quite high, around 85 to 90 percent. Um, and that's usually because there's early detection and the treatments are much better these days. However, there's a lot of side effects that go hand in hand with the treatment of prostate cancer. And that's where exercise can play a role. So the common side effects of prostate cancer, obviously, is the decrease <laughs> in musculoskeletal system. So I'm glad you like the comics. <laughs> and unfortunately, there are a host of side effects. And there are increased fat mass, decrease in lean mass, increase of incidence of uh, myocardial infarction, um, so towards a heart attack, your um, cholesterol gets higher, insulin sensitivity is also decreased, you also get a lot more fat mass unfortunately. So these are very common side effects of prostate cancer and the reason why this is so important is because when you couple it with the general effects of aging, which anyone over 30 starts getting is basically, you know, cardiovascular disease, your risk of it, your diabetes, osteoporosis, arthritis, and sarcopenia, which is basically your bones aren't as strong as they used to be. And so the big issue is when these are all combined, you have to increase risk of falls. And that's where health professionals are all about falls prevention and making sure no one falls because it loses independence and then everything else cascades and that's where all the problems lie. And so what we try to do is exercise. And so exercise obviously Gaveo is massive. He does a lot of research along with Newton in this area of prostate cancer. To me they're the leading <coughs> researchers and they basically have done most of the research and done many many studies and they found that in a follow-up study of about 2,705 men diagnosed with non-metastatic disease, which means it hasn't spread, um, there's a 49% lower risk of all-cause mortali mortality, which is death of any nature, 61% uh, lower risk of prostate cancer death um, because people were exercising. Okay, and that is, is after they've been diagnosed, they were exercising, did a resistance training program generally um, of roughly 12 weeks. So their programs are generally 12 weeks and they sometimes do it purely on resistance or combine it with aerobic as well. And they find that exercise in general has that um, statistically shown that it lowers the risk. And also in Kenfield, um, they found that moderate amount of vigorous exercise will also result in a 49% lower risk of prostate cancer death. So there are massive amount of research these days saying how wonderful exercise is in the health and the treatment of cancer, um, not just with prostate cancer. Um, but however, it needs to be the right dosage, the mode. Um, like I said, you've got to treat it like medicine to actually have the full effects. So no one shoe fits all. Um, so we need to tailor exercise to what you specifically need to work on to improve what your goals are. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about research. So I want to back up everything I'm saying with research. Um, and then there's a lot of references in there if you want to do further reading or if you need further information as well. But a lot of people ask, is exercise safe? 
for cancer survivors? And I bet you most of you probably will know the answer. Yes, it is safe. Um, there are no adverse effects from participating. And in 2010, they had a round table of specialists with the American College of Sports Medicine. Um, and they basically concluded with that when they just looked at all these trials and studies. So there is considerable and consistent and to me overwhelming evidence um, to support the benefits that these um, survivors have obtained, which is reduced fatigue. A lot of people have complaints of fatigue after treatment um, and even during treatment. So it helped with fatigue. It helped obviously with muscle function, physical performance, um, increased aerobic capacity, um, basically your endurance, and also body composition. You look better, you feel better, okay? And obviously your balance, which is a big thing for falls prevention. Um, so these are all the things they found uh, with um, exercise and it is safe for everyone to participate. Even as early as within, during treatment, um, in early stages of treatment, people are encouraged to exercise <laughs> as long as your oncologist and obviously health professionals have given you the big okay to do so. Um, and obviously after. Um, we want to, unfortunately, when people are survivors, they become sedentary um, due to these side effects and that's when there's more risk of those other chronic conditions coming into the foreground. So the benefits of exercise everyone knows, they're basically what I was just saying before, but these actual benefits are no different from the general Joe Blow who doesn't have cancer. These are the same benefits that people will get as well. So obviously you'll get improvements in cardiovascular fitness because you can run further, you can do a lot more. Um, immune function is improved, so you're more resistant to the common colds and flus. You sleep better because you use up all that energy you ingest from food. Um, you have better self-esteem because like I said before, you look better, you feel better, um, and obviously you're stronger, you can do more. So with Newton and Gaveo, which is what I was saying before, they've done a lot of exercise research with prostate cancer. Um, again, most of the research is done, yeah, with exercise programs are between 12 weeks to 20 weeks um, and resistance training program for this one. And they usually have two to three sessions per week, 12 exercises at six to 12 repetition maximum. And that's basically um, lifting something six times or 12 times um, until they get fatigued, so that amount. Um, so what their studies show, the results is that the muscle strength increases significantly with the chest press, okay? um, with seated rows, which is pulling back, leg press, pushing with your legs. So 40% increase after their study, 42%, 96%. So it's quite overwhelming that you're improving in strength by that much. With endurance, they improved about 115%, 167%. So these are overwhelming statistics. And balance, which is the big key factor, 7.8%. And six meter walk, 14.1%. So which means how fast you can actually walk in six meters. Um, and chair rise, which to me is a very big indicator of functionality, um, because if you think about it, everything you do every day to get up from a chair, um, you need to be able to do this without, you know, relying on armrests or anything like that, it improved by 26.8%. So these are very promising and fantastic sort of results that they've got. And this is not, this is only one study, they've done many studies and they've got similar results in this. Um, whole lean body mass also got preserved with no change in fat mass, unfortunately, and they don't know exactly why. Um, they do get stronger, but the fat mass um, stays the same, and it could be very well, obviously, the side effect of the medication and the treatment. Um, they did a follow-up study which reported testosterone levels remain suppressed even immediately after acute bouts of exercise, high intensity. So there used to be this big notion that if you're going to do exercise, um, usually with treatment, it's like don't exercise, you know, just rest, just rest so you can deal with the treatment better. And now they move to just low intensity, just gradual, just do a little bit. But now they're starting to come across and see that moderate to high intensity may not be such a bad thing either, okay, and it is still quite safe, okay. Obviously you need to get it with the right guidance and supervision as to what to do, okay, for it to be safe. 
So resistors versus aerobic. To me, these studies are inconclusive. One study says it's always better to do resistance. One says it's better to do aerobic. To me, it depends on the person. So if you can um, incorporate some of this into your daily life, the better it will be for you. If you can do both, great. But in Santa Mina's research, they did 66 survivors uh, received AD, ADT treatment um, for six months at a home base. So they found that both modalities improved quality of life because people were doing more, they're functionally better. Um, and aerobic capacity, obviously, because you're doing exercise. The aerobic group obviously had much greater physical activity volume because cardiovascularly, they have to, like if it's running, walking, jogging to get the same effects as resistance, they do a much greater volume. Um, but they did find that at three months, they had reductions in weight, um, in waist circumference, in BMI, okay? So there are benefits with that. Their resistance um, part of their program didn't show as much greater results, but that's only because the resistance equipment they used were different. So because this is home-based, they use exercise bands. And if you guys have used exercise bands before, um, they provide resistance. They're really good to maintain functionality, but the progress may not be as fast as if you use weight training at a gym. So where you've got weights and actual proper weights and so forth. Um, you still get the benefits, it's just how fast you get them, I guess. So the possible mechanism of how exercise <coughs> works, and people are, again, studies are inconclusive, it's only hypothesized at the moment. Um, so they think it could be the alteration in hormones. Um, they found in athletes, uh, testosterone levels, like I said, dropped right after exercise. Um, so that's why they think exercise has that possibility of alterating hormone activity. Um, Obviously with exercise, as you know, it boosts your innate immune system. Um, so that's where you know they're thinking it could also help. Prevention of obesity, they think that fat stores are not good and it actually stores cancer cells and that's why people are more uh, susceptible to it. And generation of reactive oxygen species. So they're basically saying it will combat like the free radicals and any bad, um, in promotes good enzymes to actually fight the bad ones. So these are all theories and of the me mechanisms, but they don't actually know exactly 100% how exercise, what mechanisms it is that precisely creates all these um, wonderful effects and you know, protection. Exercise con cognition, <laughs> Lee in 2012, um, she did a research into the efficacy in walking programs in promoting cognitive and psychosocial functions in men with prostate cancer. Um, obviously, there's reduced cognitive demands with ADT. They question also the memory issues as a side effect, learning, attention, ex ex executive function leading to depression and self-esteem. So with exercise, obviously, you're generating a lot more blood flow. So that's the theory behind it. Um, much better blood flow, uh, circulates all the happy um, hormones around, endorphins around, so it makes you feel better. And also, uh, training your brain in that sense. If you improve circulation, then your brain can function better as well. So that's why they're thinking it will help with attention span, with memory, uh, with learning. And the big area of um, exercise and sexual health. Unfortunately, until recently, um, there wasn't, and, and honestly, when I was doing my research as well, only really two articles have come up about this. And it is a big area and it's an untapped area at the moment. And it is a big concern for prostate cancer survivors. But Call Me has actually done two and I think sh um, they're the ones who are actually uh, doing a lot more research in this field along I think she's, uh, they're working with uh, Newton and uh, Gabeo as well. Um, and what they're looking into is whether exercise helps with sexual health uh, with prostate cancer survivors. And again, they follow a relatively similar um, program. And it's usually a 12 week program, resistance and aerobic. Um, they usually do eight exercises that target the whole body. Okay, they don't just focus on one area of the body with resistance exercise. So exercises like chest press, seated row, <coughs> shoulder press, uh, triceps extension, um, and they also for two, two to four sets, six to 12 repetitions. And they also do aerobic component, which is 15 to 20 minutes of walking, jogging, cycling, cross trainer, anything um, like that uh, for 65 to 80% of the heart rate maximum. 
um, and at a, basically an exertion of around 11 to 13, which is like you, you're somewhat exercising, you're exercising to the extent where you can just carry out a conversation. Um, and they're encouraged to obviously be active at home, do home-based activity to accumulate roughly 150 minutes per week. The finding is that it helped preserve sexual um, activity in prostate cancer survivors receiving ADT. Um, it, there wasn't any evidence to show it improved, uh, but it did preserve it, which is a good sign that there is benefit and it's actually exercise. And also um, in this year's paper, uh, they found out that it improved libido, quality of life. Obviously with lean muscle mass is improved and fatigue's improved um, and aerobic capacity and all these sort of physical functionalities and physiological factors. It gives people, uh, men, more masculinity and a positive impact on their libido, which is a good <laughs> sign for survivors as well. Um, and obviously if you combine it with uh, psychological therapy as well to help you manage uh, stress and self-esteem and depression and also with uh, pharmaceutical as well then all that will come together and that will overall improve um, sexual health as well. So with um, ESSA which is the Exercise and Sports Science Australia Association which is where all exercise physio physiologists are accredited with um, they out a two dozen, in 2009, they put out a position statement on cancer uh, survivors and their treatment and optimizing outcomes with exercise. And what they've suggested as a general guideline for all cancer survivors is to do some low to moderate intensity. So this is with any cancer, not just prostate cancer. Um, three to four times a week is recommended and at least 20 minutes each session if you can. Okay. So do most of you do that right now or yeah? You haven't mentioned swimming. Swimming. <laughs> oh, swimming's perfect. Yep, swimming's aerobic. Yep, you can definitely do swimming. Um, <laughs> put it. <laughs> but swimming is definitely a good one as well. Um, and also a mixed exercise type. So definitely swimming which is aerobic with resistance as well. With Galveo, they've set out their own exercise guidelines for prostate cancer survivors. And what they've recommended is this number of 150 minutes per week you should be doing of exercise to have some protective um, benefits. They recommend moderate, okay, moderate. So they're starting to move away from the low to the moderate intensity of roughly six to eight on a 10 point perceived exertion scale. Again, it's around the 11 to 13 where you're just about to carry out conversation. You're working pretty hard um, of aerobic ex exercise and two or more sessions per week of resistance training, which involves three or more sets, okay, and six to eight exercises at six to 10 repetition maximum. So you can only lift up to six um, repetitions or 10 of a load. So there's different types, aerobic. So aerobic, yes, it could be swimming. Yeah, swimming is not in there, that's, that is true. Um, but it could be skipping. Um, they found skipping, bounding, and those types of impact based are really good to promote bone density, okay, and bone health, bone mass. So a lot of people get scared off by it because of the impact, but it's actually shown to be safe even for people with osteoarthritis, osteoporosis is definitely beneficial as well. So it's a big surprise, but that's what the overwhelming papers are starting to come out with new research. It's just making sure you do the right type and the right kind at the right timing for yourself, okay? Um, so skipping is good, very good actually. Um, and obviously with cycling, cross trainer, um, and so forth. So aerobic exercise can Im usually involve large muscle groups. Um, and it can be swimming, high impact, contact spots, treadmill, rowing, cycling. Again, frequency is three to five times per week. Moderate is six to 80% of your heart rate maximum. So to work out what your heart rate maximum is, is the estimated one, is basically 220 minus your age. Um, and then you take 60% of that um, as the lower range, 80% as your higher range. So you know where you're roughly exercising around. So if you have a heart rate monitor on you, you can actually have that as a guide. If you don't, again, um, you've got the talk, um, talk test where basically if you are 
sitting down, having a relaxing conversation, that means you're not exercising hard enough, okay? Um, if you're gasping and panting and you can't carry out conversation and gasping for air, that means you're exercising too hard. So you want somewhere in between where you can just carry out a conversation, um, but you're sweating a little bit. Um, and you also have to obviously exercise 20, 30 minutes continuously to get the benefits. Um, and the progression is slow and gradual. So how you increase is slow and gradual. Resistance exercise can be a form of a gym stick. So those of you who've done the Enrich program will understand what a gym stick is. Um, it's basically um, a stick with some rubber tubing on the end of it. Um, and we can go through some exercise. We'll show you some exercises later on of how to use it. Dumbbells is another one, a form of resistance exercise. Better still, nothing. Your own body weight. Gravity is a wonderful resistance exercise as well. Um, you need no equipment for that. You can do that anywhere. Um, exercise bands that we were talking about before and obviously with gym equipment so you've got fancy expensive equipment but you can actually do resistance exercise with nothing and just things around the home and I'm a big fan about doing exercise and using resistance um, do resistance exercise with equipment around the home because you're more likely to adhere and stick to it in the long term than if you were to get a gym membership uh, but if you're you know very into the gym membership and you want to do that then that's all good too um, resistance exercise again can be dynamic um, so obviously you're lifting machine weights free weights body weight exercise bands frequency is one to three times a week have rest days it's important to have rest days in between um, that's how your muscles uh, recover and get stronger Intensity is 50 to 80 percent, uh, one repetition maximum, or 6 to 12 repetition maximum. So it depends on what protocol you want to do. Um, and again, definitely 6 to 10 exercises, one to four sets per muscle group. And I would strongly recommend global exercises, which means you're targeting a lot more than just one specific muscle group. You're targeting the whole body. Um, and slow and gradual is the progression again. So why not exercise? Unfortunately, a lot of people, even though they know all the benefits of the world about exercise, they hear it all, I should exercise, but why don't they? And that's a big thing um, in a lot of areas that I am, and that's lifestyle modifications, what's needed. Um, but what gets people motivated? A lot of people say they lack the confidence after treatment. They don't know if they can do it, okay? Um, or old age, physical decline, to me, that's no excuse. Um, uh, um, yeah, no, unfortunately, no. People, yeah. I had um, uh, my husband's grandfather was running the city to surf till he was 85. So, really, it's not a reason. People think you can't get muscle or bone, it, you can't get it back um, when you're that old. That's not true. You can get muscle mass, you can get stronger, you can get endurance, you can get the bone mass, um, but it's just the rate you get it and how much you get, okay? So um, don't let age be the limiting factor, okay? Um, uh, comorbidity is, that's right, yeah. So any other health conditions you might have, doesn't mean the guarantee you doesn't mean you can't do exercise whatsoever i usually deal with people with three four five um, complex health conditions and they still manage to do exercise and benefit from it um, it's just about what type of exercise and when and lack of time oh i love that one i don't have time uh, how people put everything else as a priority over themselves um, the only way I look at it is, if you don't look after yourself, how are you going to enjoy the things you love? How are you going to look after other people? Okay, so you need to put yourself as a priority, no matter if you're a carer or the survivor, it doesn't matter. You need to block out maybe, I don't know, an hour a day, whether it's first thing in the morning, um, that it's me time. Or if that's too hard, um, find little pockets of time. If you're standing there waiting for the water to boil when you're, I don't know, put the kettle on or cooking some pasta or cooking your dinner, you're in the kitchen, maybe do a few stretches, maybe do a few exercises there. Wall push-ups, you have walls right there or against the bench, just be careful where you do it. Um, but, or waiting for the bus, you can do a few stretches here, there, a few squats. Um, I don't know. Oh, I'm really serious, yeah. Um, no, no, no. Um, I've even got clients who, just as a starting base, um, before they get up, every time they want to get up from a chair, they have to do it twice. 
might look like they have OCD, but they, <laughs> they reap the benefits because over time all that accumulates. So in, from her not being able to do um, one sit to stand, she does 20 easily in a day now. And she used to not even be able to get up without using armrests. So um, every little bit counts. So what to do? You guys recognize this guy? No, I love Norm. It wasn't Norm I was thinking of. Every little bit counts. <laughs> and he used to be around. I love this character. And this is what has happened, unfortunately, to society these days. Everything has become too convenient. Um, and there was this whole physical the campaign to be physically active, life be in it, and Norm was there. Um, and so now we're promoting things like take the stairs instead of lifts. I mean, once upon a time there were no lifts. Um, walk the dog. They found studies where people who have dogs live longer only because the dog will always make them go out for a walk. Otherwise, they will just stay at home and do nothing uh, or watch TV like Norm. Um, and so what I usually say is if you don't have a dog, go borrow a dog. Um, there's rescues uh, where at the pounds or something like that, Monica's doggy rescue, they always want volunteers to help them walk their dogs. Um, so you can have a nice day out doing that. Um, walking to the end of the street to get the milk or the newspaper, that's always fantastic. Um, now Woolworths delivers, home delivers, that just cuts out more. Um, Visiting friends, the more you lock yourself out of the house um, during the day, the more likely you're going to be physically active, is usually what I try to say. So um, unless you're one who loves doing housework and non-stop potters around the house, um, most people uh, are more sedentary when they're in the house. Um, and going grocery shopping, like I said, Woolworths delivers now, so um, it takes that home. It's so much fun just oh, clicking the yeah. buttons, yeah. Just <laughs> but it's an easy way to slip in a few more steps here and there if you walk through every aisle of, um, not to say you buy everything and maybe skip the naughty aisles, um, but go through <laughs> all the aisles of the actual gross shopping centre. And you'll find that it's a very good workout. And that's no excuse for weather as well. So if it's raining, obviously if you're in a shopping centre, you walk on one side of the shopping centre, they make them so big these days that you'll get quite a bit of a workout. Um, washing dishes, um, dishwasher does it. Even these days, you press a button to open the windows in your car before you used to have a few more little bits of physical activity to wind down the windows. So <laughs> every little bit counts to be physically active um, and that's physical activity, that's not even exercise. So exercise is when you're doing structured activity to target a specific goal that you're trying to achieve, okay? Um, and Recently, they've got this campaign, swap it, don't stop it, okay? So with that, they're basically saying is just switch to unhealthy or not the so good habits with the better habits, so you're not eliminating at all. Um, so when it comes to diet, everybody might like ice cream, they might change and pick the better brand of ice cream or um, it's the same with exercise. So instead of um, deciding to go watch a movie, you might go to the park and have a picnic and uh, kick a ball around or something like that with your family. So it's just basically being a little bit more creative, thinking outside the square um, and being a little bit more active. And once you start and you try new things um, and new hobbies, it becomes easier to maintain and sustain. And once you've got that interest in being physically active, you're more likely to maybe adopt maybe more resistance exercise or aerobic exercise to fit into your lifestyle and make that your priority. So does everybody know about the Medicare Enhanced Primary Care Plan? Never heard of it. Never heard of it? No, okay. So anyone with a chronic health condition is eligible under Medicare uh, for five sessions per calendar year um, with an allied health professional. Um, so Medicare covers a rebate of around $52.95 or something thereabouts. Um, and depending on the allied health professional, you might have a gap to pay, but you get those five sessions covered with them. Um, and it doesn't have to be just with an exercise physiologist. It can be, you might want to mix it up where you see three with an exercise physiologist, two with a dietitian, or one with the physio, one with a dietitian, you know, you can mix it up. And there's one, two, three, four, five, 13 allied health um, types that you can actually get assistance from depending on what you need. 
So they'll need um, a referral, like the one on the screen, um, from your GP. Uh, and the GP might know of some and they have, you know, maybe preferred providers. Uh, but you might be able to access that um, through, you know, um, what you need, depending on what your needs are, really. Um, so if the doctor feels this year you might benefit more from the exercise, then they might refer five sessions. Next year, you can spend the next five sessions on a dietitian and so forth. So it's per calendar year, five sessions, um, Medicare rebated. Uh, yes? Um, before you created the Pilates instructor, would it come under that sort of category? No, unless they're an exercise physiologist or um, a physiotherapist who might run it, um, but not a Pilates instructor. Um, they, may, they may be one of these other health professionals. They might be extra also qualified as well, and that's where you can access them that way. Um, but no. Uh, personal trainers are also a big no-no as well, um, not for them. Um, do you guys know the difference between personal trainers, exercise physiologists? No? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, personal trainers are, are usually, I say, for the general public who want to get healthy, lose weight. Okay? They don't have chronic conditions. So to become a personal trainer, you can become a personal trainer in a course, a six-week course, maybe, a 12-week course. Um, but they're getting better now. They're somewhere six months to a year, okay? But they're not university qualified. And exercise physiologists have to be university qualified. Um, usually it's a four-year program uh, with one of the major universities and they have to study physiology, anatomy, and obviously uh, chronic conditions as well. So they have a much greater understanding as to what exercise you should be doing uh, depending on what condition you have. Um, so. It's sort of like a situation where a square can be a rectangle, a rectangle can't be a square. So with a Pilates instructor, they may also be a, a qualified um, and accredited exercise physiologist. They may be also a physiotherapist, have additional qualifications of which you'll be able to access some assistance from them. Um, but it has to be one-on-one -on -one and the sessions have to be at least 20 minutes. Um, and obviously there's reporting back to the doctor and so forth on your progress. So if they're using Pilates as a method um, of treatment, um, as an exercise type component, and they're treating you individually, um, that could very well be under that. But it depends on what they're doing and what their goals are and how they're working with you. So, and what qualifications they have in regards to that. Is that clear? Any questions? Mm -hmm. so, no? Okay. Um, so again, you can locate a exercise physiologist um, in your local area uh, through the ESSA website um, and the GP can access that too. Um, and the dietitians uh, through the dietitians website as well. So um, there's quite a few around. Um, but always ask them um, how they go about it. Some will come to you, some you might have to go to the clinic and some they might bulk bill and some, you know, they might charge a gap. So um, just ask beforehand. Um, other little groups that you can do to stay physically active. Um, um, exercising in a group is more fun uh, for a lot of people. So the Heart Foundation runs walking groups as well. So um, the Heart Moves program, which is a gentle exercise program as well. Um, these aren't specific to prostate cancer, but it's something to get <coughs> physically active, get involved in. Um, and that's where you can locate them through those websites as well. Um, and also now the Enrich program. So some of you already done the Enrich program. Uh, initially, it started as a randomized controlled trial, and they were basically focused on educating survivors and carers on healthy eating and exercise. So it was for any cancers, and it still is. Um, so it's for cancer survivors and also their carers as well. They're always invited to, to come along. Um, it used to be an eight-week program, but now that the trial's finished, it's now a six-week program. And it's basically six two-hour sessions, of which one hour, I think it's 40 minutes is on um, exercise, 40 minutes is on diet, um, and then the remainder is on walking and activity and um, having a, starting a home walking program. Uh, so every session, there's that healthy eating component, exercise component, you're using a gym stick, um, and it's conducted obviously by accredited exercise physiologists and accredited dietitians as well. So, the Cancer Council um, runs these throughout New South Wales. Um, Gabrielle is the person who has been coordinating all, 
but you can email her on that if you're interested and she can direct you to the closest um, program to you and when it starts and obviously if there's enough uh, participants and interest they can look into um, uh, getting funding and so forth and carrying out a program in that area and that location. Um, so using can a... I, yeah? Can I ask, um, are other cancer councils in the other states uh, conducting ENRICH or a similar program? Similar programs. Uh, do you know their names or anything? Because um, actually the video goes out across Australia. Not off the top of my head, but I am aware that there are uh, quite a lot of groups running um, similar programs to this uh, by different cancer councils. So. so in other words, people in other states other than New South Wales, if they got in contact with their cancer council in their state, they should be able to direct them yeah. Uh, yeah. correctly. Yeah, that's yep. correct. Yeah. Um, there's always going to be some sort of support and some exercise program for survivors. So um, especially now that there's a lot more evidence, um, overwhelming evidence that exercise plays a big part in cancer survivorship as well. Um, so it's a, I don't know about the other programs, but with Enrich, they use the gym stick. Um, but from what I know also with Enrich, they're um, not only using the gym stick now, they're using exercise bands as well. So the gym stick, you can do a lot of exercise. And the a gym stick. That's a gym stick. So the idea is it's portable. Um, yeah, it, it's um, from overseas. Okay, it's from overseas. Um, they used to use it for athletes. And it's a nifty tool uh, where you can take it anywhere. You can do it in your office. You can do it at home. Um, you do it in front of telly. Um, and it provides um, you, obviously, the resistance exercise. And it's got different gradings depending on what tubing that um, it is, like the exercise band as well. Um, and basically you can do uh, you know, squats with the gym stick behind you to provide a little bit more resistance, upright rows, and you know, you've got various exercises and there's a whole lot of them that it comes with the gym stick that you can try. So um, it's also to make it a little bit more interesting as well. Um, for those. Those. Oh. Cancer Council, I think you can get one for Gab. She'll be able to tell you the suppliers. Um, there's a lot of suppliers. You can buy them from Gymstick directly as well, um, but they're, they're starting to get a little bit more popular, but you need to go to exercise suppliers to actually find them. So if you Google them, you'll be able to find it. But the Gymstick will actually, ex it, there's exercises in the book to exercise virtually every part of your body, isn't there, with yeah, them? Yeah, yeah. If you're a part of the Enrich program, you'll get direction on what exercise to do. Um, and what's, uh, they're not usually as, hardcore is the ones in the um, book that you're given with the gym stick, uh, but it depends on the level of gym stick that you buy as well. So um, I imagine there will vary the exercises depending on the category of the gym stick that you're buying. Mm. Um, so that's the Enrich program and you can give them a call if you want a bit more information. And so that comes to the conclusion of my presentation. If there's any questions, uh, feel free to ask and um, you can email me, you can give me a call. Uh, if there's any questions as well. Mm. But you used the initials ADT, was it? ADT, no, andro androgen deprivation tr therapy. Oh, say it again. Androgen deprivation therapy. Androgen deprivation therapy. Hormone therapy. Hormone yeah. three. Yeah. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. Hormone <laughs> Jenny, um, yeah. it's, it's going. Um, last week I had my 26th ADT Zolodex implant, <laughs> um, which is recognised as having an impact on your bone density, yeah. and I have a bone DEXA scan every year. Good. Three years ago, I had 15% loss in bone density in the left femoral neck. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> don't. I'm not looking for sympathy. I still ski like you, you wouldn't believe and, and I'm Good. but I am a little bit worried about bone trauma or bone fracture um, and I think I have to have a broken bone before I'm entitled to go on a, a, a bone density improvement as a, a okay. phosphate type drug. Oh, yeah. No. No? no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so to me, um, yes, that is a common uh, side effect. Uh, to me, don't be too scared about bone. Bone loves impact. Bone um, strength is uh, developed by impact exercise. So if you're skiing, you're doing activity, that's going to help your bone strength and bone density. Um, obviously, you will need, uh, obviously, 
or some sort of calcium and vitamin D to also help with that as well. Um, but definitely with the actual exercise, that, that component is going to be more important than anything and the impact exercise, so long as it's the right one for you, that's going to be very important to help you um, with falls prevention and so forth. Was that your question? or? Well, uh, uh, do you know any more information about uh, having bone density tests and having treatment for bone density? Or um, I think uh, Tony should just uh, follow that through with his GP. Most likely follow it with your GP in regards to that, um, but definitely that the GP should be able to give you the right information and direction with regards to bone density. There is um, an EP company, I, th I can't remember, somewhere in Sydney that does that and does a big focus on um, bone density and doing all that sort of scanning and tailoring exercise to go with it. But I can't remember who it is. So major hospitals definitely do the scan um, and some private clinics also can do the scan as well. Um, but actually funding and all that is further information. I wouldn't be able to give you that detailed information. If I could say something on a personal note, I had to have regular um, bone density because I was on steroids for many, many years. Um, and in the end, I was eligible for the, um, the, the extra treatments of Fosamax as it was then. I think it's improved now, not because I was having fractures, but because the, um, the osteoporotic syndrome was sort of, they, they could detect hairline something or other. So it's, you don't have to have it broken necessarily, this is only a lay person, before you have treatment because they understand it's more important to keep your bones healthy. Yeah. But there is a percentage or something. So if you have the, the, the bone scans normally, they will recommend and your doctor will check. And, and then you're on the treatment. It wasn't yeah. difficult for me. And I was on the treatment for many years and had annual scans. They've even gone out to 12 monthly now oh, too. Jenny, I am experienced with a bit of bone com uh, impact. I hit a tree in Lake Louise and knocked a centimetre off L1 to L4, right lateral process. I got air, like about six metres air, landed, knocked unconscious and cracked eight ribs and collapsed the lung. So uh, just in 2007. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> not that type of impact <laughs> we want. Yeah. Can, I, can I ask a question? Uh, I wonder whether some of us feel it's a bit difficult because we can go to an exercise physiologist like yourself and prepare a plan, but there doesn't seem to be anybody that can keep us on the straight and narrow, such as um, a uh, personal trainer or something like that. Mm. It's up to us then to go to the gym and do what you suggest, is that correct? Is there anyone that can stay on our tail to make sure we do these things correctly? It, uh, it depends on exercise physiologists and exercise physiologists is all about self-management so giving uh. you the tools to <laughs> know how to manage yourself and keep yourself on track. Having said that, um, I that's you, transferring the guilt to us, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but we're giving you the tools to know how to manage it. Um, but with an exercise physiologist, what I tend to find is sometimes um, people just need a bit of direction and um, making sure they're doing the right type of exercise. So with some of my clients, I see them for five sessions and then next year they might get a booster shot. So they know that with another session here or there, um, just to make sure they're still on the right track. So when they know there's another session coming up next year, they've got in the back of their mind that they they have to keep on going because somebody's going to be monitoring them in that session when the time You either comes. do it or you lose it, Graham. Yeah, That's you right. lose it. Yeah, it's a very good. But would many of your clients be uh, doing regular gym uh, workouts or they tend more to be home-based uh, exercises? It depends on where I work because I work yeah. in a lot of different places. Yeah. There's, um, there are some that are very gym-based, um, but I am a big fan of home-based. Mm. I find adherence is much better with home-based. Um, because you're using things around the home um, as opposed to going out to somewhere external. But, you know, we can do both. It's, it's up to the um, person that we're treating and what their interests are and whether that works for them. Yeah. I swim five, morning, five mornings a week, like mm. Monday to Friday, for 50 minutes. Is that enough exercise? That's quite a lot. That's good. Um, and exercise is great in swimming, um, and I'm a big fan of swimming. However, I would still promote you do some land-based exercise. Like walking? Uh, uh, weight resistance exercise. Oh, uh, because not that likely to do that. That will help with bone. What about health. digging in the garden? Is that weight? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need that's a gym stick. Yeah, you can do gym stick. Um, there are different ways to do it. So you don't need equipment. Like I said, you can use body weight as resistance, and that will still give you resistance training. It's just that we don't live in water all the time. Uh, we live on land, so we need to also make sure we look after our bones as well, um, and with gravity and so forth. That will help. Um, swimming has wonderful benefits with aerobic. Um, it does build up uh, cardiovascular endurance, obviously, because it's aerobic, and also muscular endurance and strength. It does do that because the water does provide some sort of resistance, but not as much as if you were doing land-based exercise. So it's fantastic. Keep it up. Don't change it because that's something it sounds like you love and enjoy thoroughly. Um, but maybe incorporate a little bit here and there, maybe a few exercises with um, land base as well. Thank you. That's all right. New South Wales, Hells, Western Sydney, they're spending $328 million developing a Blacktown Hospital, new car parking, but more importantly, an integrated cancer care centre. It's about $128 million. And I've been asked to come in as a consumer on a number of the committees in the de 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 development mm -hmm. of that cancer care centre. And some of the meetings we went to, we actually talked about cancer in general, not just prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. And we're surrounded in that hospital probably by about 15 different gyms. And the view was maybe we could put the acid on those gyms to reduce their annual membership from $800 to $300. And a bit like Alcoholics Anonymous, adopt a buddy system where, you know, guilt complex, but if somebody's going off the wagon and not turning up at the gym, mm. that there's a support mechanism because it, it is, can be boring as yeah. hell. Mm. And if you, would you care to comment on these suggestions? That's why I was saying exercising in groups <laughs> It generates much better adherence rates and exactly for what you're saying. Um, and so that's why I would probably promote more of the um, community groups that are around. Um, so there's not just the walking groups, but I think in Northern Sydney, they all run um, little small exercise groups as well, um, all over, not just Northern Sydney, but all over Sydney as well. So you don't necessarily have to be in the gym setting because some people find gym settings quite confronting as well. Um, and that the same exercises are a bit repetitive, like you were saying as well. So um, you can do, uh, basically the idea is to exercise in a group, exercise with someone so it doesn't become boring. And I would say exercise outdoors is more interesting than exercising indoors. So whether you want to spend that extra, a lot of money with gym memberships or not, I, oh, I question whether it's that necessary in honesty so um, you can do gym memberships but trying to get the gym um, to actually give you discounted memberships as well will be another uh, hurdle to face I would say yeah any other questions and rich program too by the way yeah. Yeah. That's another well, thank you very much Jen. Pleasure. Um, I think uh, we've all valued uh, the presentation tonight and I've heard a couple of presentations by Galveo and Newton as oh. well and they're terrific fellows who yeah. uh, have done a lot of research as Jenny first mentioned yeah. into the benefits of exercise.